it is good for us to be here. Man, let us just settle in to what the Lord is doing this morning. Let us just settle in, man. As it is always my heart and practice, I never want to come before the people of God with just whatever I want to say. I try to make sure it's not me doing what I want to do, just saying what I want to say. So I really lean into the Lord that he would give me what is his sentiment for his people directly. And I believe he often does that, and today is no different. I believe the Lord is sharing something with us this morning that is not necessarily a new word, but it is absolutely a critical and timely word because of the season that we're in. I know you've probably been hearing a lot about miracles, signs, and wonders. The heart of the Lord is, listen, he doesn't give us a sign because we seek after a sign. Because those of us that have relationship are affirmed as to who he is. But he does every now and again flex on us just to remind us who we're really dealing with because there is nothing too hard for our God. And the crushing things of life that seem to impede us and to bog us down are child's play for our King. The Bible says that in the presence of the Lord, mountains melt like wax. So I hope you brought some mountains in here today so we can get those flattened right on down to size so you can keep on being about your father's business. And so this morning, we're going to talk about a problem that some of us consistently have. Now, I must warn you, I blame, I blame myself for this being the word this morning because it definitely had to address me first. And so for the Lord to be able to tell it to me, and then it gives me the ability to share it to you. But I just want to, um, I believe what the Lord is really wanting, wanting us to pay closer attention to is a problem that has been hiding right up under our nose. There's a problem that we all have that's been hiding right under our noses the whole time. And if I had to have a title, which I don't often do titles, but if I had to have one, it would simply be Speak Life. Speak Life. So Proverbs 18 and 21, I'm going to read in the Amplified Version, says this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Already this verse is telling me that the tongue has power. My tongue and your tongue has power. Say that with me. Say, my tongue has power. Ooh, and you're responsible for that power. Along with great power. This is probably the most quoted uh, non-Bible verse. <laughs> Slash Marvel. Is it Marvel Comics verse? Along with great power comes great responsibility. And your tongue and my tongue has power. I'm talking about real power. Not ethereal make-believe power, but actual power. And within that power is the ability to partner with either death or life. And so it's not if we have power, we do have power. But what the if is, what part of the power are we professing? And I don't think it's ironic that death comes before life because I just think that it's quite natural that because we're still housed in this flesh, that death is still kind of natural to us. 
is something about human nature that just likes to give voice to the negatives. But that's why the Lord says in him we receive a new nature. So we're no longer limited to our human nature. We receive Christ, which avails us to his mind, which gives us the ability to be a partaker of his divine nature. And when we're partnering with Christ, we will speak life. Because if we walk in the spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of our flesh. It says... And those who love and indulge it will eat the fruit and bear the consequences of their words. This is, this is important. This is really important. And I know it's not a new revelation, but I believe the Lord is saying for what he's endeavoring to do in our lives, specifically in this season, he's going to need our partnership and cooperation to agree with what he's doing and fall out of agreement to what the enemy is doing. And so we're going to start off with a quick little story. We're going to start off with a story, Luke chapter 1. I really didn't want to read all of this because I felt like, you know, it's too much. But the Lord said read all of this, so here we go. <laughs> Luke, we're going to start at Luke chapter 1, verse 5, and we're kind of going to just plow through about 15 verses, all right? It won't be as bad as it sounds, I promise. When Herod was king of Judea, there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah. He was a member of the priestly order of Jab, Jabiah, Jab, 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 and his wife Elizabeth was also from the priestly line of Aaron. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all of the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive, and they both were very old. One day, Zechariah was serving God in the temple, for his order was on uh, duty that week. And as on duty that week, as was the custom of the priest, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incenses were burned, a great crowd stood outside praying. While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will give you a son and his name will be John. You will be, he, he says, you will have great joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord and he will turn the hearts of the father to the children and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. And this is a high calling on this man's life. Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen? Quick recap. These are already God's people. He's God's man. He's a priest. He's accustomed and used to serving in the presence of the Lord. Nothing new there. This is his calling. He's serving. He's even, he's even considered righteous in the eyes of God. So him and the Lord has a really good relationship. And here it is. He's been praying for a thing. He's been praying for a thing, and here it is on this day while he is performing his service unto the Lord. He's met by a real life in the natural angel. Just to let us know, angels are not physical material beings. They're spiritual beings. But here he is in the physical material world being visited by a supernatural spiritual being. I'm not sure that he was too accustomed to this kind of occurrence because he was shaken and very afraid. So first off, this is different. 
And this angel proceeds to give him information that how else could he have known? And upon receiving the information from the angel, his response was, how can I be sure this will happen? Well, if this ain't some indication that this is going to happen, we got some talking to do. At what point do we believe what God has said? Even after all of that, all of the relationship, all of the connection, the supernatural visitation from like a real life archangel, after all it is, how can I be sure? Still got doubts here. If an angel showing up don't help you believe, <laughs> the situation is a little critical. But here we go. We go further. His next words in this supernatural moment, the next words that he uttered was, I, I says, I'm an old man now, and my wife is also well along in years. Again, it's something about human nature that just has to give voice to the negative. Something about us that just continue. We like to speak the problem. He just got supernatural revelation of the heart and plan of God, and all he does is focus on the problem. That's a problem. And so here it is. The angel indulges him. How can I know? I'm old, you know. There's mountains to move here. The angel said, I'm Gabriel. Wow. I think that meant right off, I ain't just... Yes, I am an angel. God has a whole lot of them, but I ain't just any angel. I'm like that guy, angel. <laughs> Lord ain't just sending you anybody. He said, man, I'm Gabriel. <laughs> I stand in the very presence of God. And it was he who sent me to bring you this news. But now... Since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at its proper time. Since you didn't believe what I said, you ain't going to be able to talk. Because I'm not going to even let you mess this up. Which shares with us the spiritual reality that our mouths has the actual ability to befuddle even the plans of God as it pertains to our life. That's a heavy responsibility. And this is one that we cannot afford to take lightly. This responsibility is so grave that it's more important than what everybody else outside of us Part, they play against us. This is so important that it don't matter what mama, daddy, and them did. It don't matter about uncle and them. It don't matter about your neighbors or your haters or the ones that stand against you. Nobody else matters when it comes to us having the potential ability to partner with God to see his will come to pass no matter who stands against us. And so the enemy uses a lot of emotion and a lot of feelings to distract us from our own responsibility to partner with the Lord. And we love to give voice and to blame everything else except us as to the reason why we have not grown, we have not matured, we have not gone further into what the Lord has for us. So I'm just here as your brother as a child of God, to remind us that it is our, our spiritual condition is our responsibility. We are right now where we have consented to go. We are not a victim of our present day. We are at our present day because of our direct involvement in us getting here. Everything I said yesterday created a harvest that has me living in it today. And everything that I'm speaking right now, because out of the heart, 
Out of the heart flows what we say, and everything that's being planted now from my own mouth is setting up a tomorrow. So if I'm saying today what I lived yesterday, my tomorrow will match my yesterday. And so because God was not going to allow for human interference to, 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 to stop his will, he said that you ain't going to be able to speak or say nothing because your tongue has the ability to tear all this up. The very thing you've been praying for, the very thing you've been believing me for, you will mess it up if you keep flying off at the mouth. And it would seem that it would be amazing if the Lord would just shut us up. But I found out that, you know, he don't just shut us up. He wants us to actually engage with the Holy Spirit in some spiritual discipline and learn how to shut up. Jesus, Jesus was not yet, Jesus was not yet born at this time. So Holy Spirit was not yet among us to dwell in us. But now the Lord is saying, listen, I didn't moved in. There's no excuse as to why we can't achieve the spiritual reality he has for us. Holy Spirit living in us, the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit of God, God on the inside of us. We have supernatural ability to partner with God if, if. Let me go to James 3 and 6. Check this out. Among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness corrupting the entire body. It can set your whole life on fire. For it is set on fire by hell itself. Man, that's some strong talk. This little thing right here has the ability to burn up destiny. To burn up purpose. And then the Bible gives us insight to understand that it's not acting by itself, but it's being partnered with by hellfire. Hellfire wants to partner with our tongue to get some stuff burnt. And so the Lord is saying, ha ha ha, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. James 3 and 8 tells us this, gives us a little more insight. No human being can tame the tongue. Wow, now this is heavy. So this ain't one of them words that just say, do better. This ain't one of those, get it together, tighten up, come on, grab yourself by your bootstraps, more human effort, more behavioral modification, and just plow through it. No human being can tame the tongue. This little sucker, so unruly, is so supernatural in nature that human beings can't even control it. So that's why the Lord says, listen, I know willpower won't get it done, but real power will. It's not by power, nor is it by might, but it's by our daily partnership with God, the Holy Spirit, to avail our members as instruments of righteousness, including this tongue. <coughs> James 1.26, check this out. If anyone thinks he is religious, but does not bridle, his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. I didn't even like add them words. That's like verbatim. Like any of us who say that we believe God and we have a belief in God, but we do not manage what comes out of our mouth then whatever we believe is worthless. Zechariah was praying for a child, 
as he served the Lord. The Lord showed up with the answer to the prayer, but he still couldn't get that tongue in line with what the will of God was and what he wanted and still almost messed it up. But watch what happens spiritually. Let's, un let's uncover this just a little more. If we are religious or we have a belief or we're believing God, but we don't put an eye on our lips to watch our mouth, but, but deceives his own heart. Check this out. This is good. The heart is the soil. And do y'all have the ability to throw the, the word heart on the screen? Can we get the word heart up there real quick? It's just done. Though. Let's do this real quick. But deceives his own heart. No, the heart, the word heart, just the word heart. Okay. I'm I want y'all to see this. If we believe something, but we don't, allow our tongues to match what we believe, the Bible says that we, not the devil, not the great deceiver, we deceive our own hearts because our hearts believe what we say more than they believe what we believe. What comes out of our mouth means a lot to our heart. Watch this. What is the word smack dab in the middle of that word? ear just as it is in the natural it is spiritually spiritually your heart right smack dab in the center of your heart is an ear and that ear is always listening to everything that's why the bible tells us to guard your heart because whatever goes in the heart out of the heart will flow the very issues of life the heart is an incubator, and it will give birth to whatever is planted in it. So we must be careful for what we allow to get in because that ear is always listening. I can't get two nickels to rub together. All right, let me produce some poverty for you since that's what we're riding with. If it wasn't for bad luck, we wouldn't have none. All righty then. There you go, buddy. Just talk crazy all the time. What's the first word, the first four letters? Hear. Hearing is the supernatural ability to get faith. The Bible tells us that faith comes by. It's good to know that faith in God comes by hearing God, but we must also understand that that's usually not the thing that, that, that confuses us or, or blocks us. The other reality is this, because Satan is a counterfeiter. So if faith in God comes by hearing God, the reverse is also true. Faith in the devil comes by listening and hearing the words of the devil. That's why I wonder, like, why is it that believers always want to quote the devil so much? You know what the devil told me? No, I don't want to know what the devil told you. And you should have handled that as soon as you heard it. It shouldn't have even made it to a conversation. Why are we rehearsing the words of the devil? Because faith is coming. The heart is listening. It's receiving to give a harvest. The enemy understands this spiritual process. That's why he holds back. No, he, hold, he is no hold bars to how he wants to bombard us with his information. We just scrolling. We ain't think that the enemy was preaching to us. I just wanted to watch a good movie. I didn't know that I was actually planting seeds in my heart to, to, to block my, my, my maturity in Christ. I just thought this was entertainment. It is entertainment. Please continue. Doesn't that feel good? The Bible says that the cares of this world Choke the word out of us. That's what the cares of this world is doing. We could be speaking life, 
Paul said, I desire that everybody prophesy. We should just be speaking the promises of God all the time. We should just be prophesying the will of God, the word of God, and the promises of God. But we care so much about this world. We're choking us. And if the word is getting choked out by the world, where's the power coming from? And so it's important to understand that these tongues are ministering to our hearts. Just this past Wednesday, we did a we we did a um we did a practice. We did a was it a practice? What I want to say? Yeah, we did a thing. We did a thing. I think we're going to do it again just to show you how powerful this is because I think it fits right here. We did a thing where we said something out loud and like we heard ourselves say it, but then we plugged our ears up as tight as we can get them and we'll say something else to see if we still hear it. But just whisper it ever so lightly. So first of all, say, I am a child of God. Did you hear that? All right, now, now plug your ears up as tight as you can and say it again low, low, very low. Okay, did you still hear it? And I suggest to you, not only did you still hear it, but you heard it so much more intimately. It was almost like a still, small voice in you that was intimate and personal for your heart only. And why that's important to understand is because this, when things kind of come out of our mouth, let me show you this. If I call you a name, if I call you stupid, your outer ear hears me call you stupid, and it can have some effect. But when you call yourself stupid, not only does your outer ear hear you, but your inner ear is listening as well. And it believes you more than even your outer ear does. And when your inner ear hears your own voice saying things about itself, it takes it to heart. And so when we say things, the heart is affected twice as, twice as much concentration on when it's coming out of our mouth as opposed to coming out of someone else's mouth. That's why we need to, with everything in us, make effort to get God's words in our mouth. So with God's words coming out of our mouth, we're, faith is coming. Faith comes by hearing. And I suggest to you, faith comes by hearing you say it more than it comes by hearing me say it or Pastor Chris say it. All right, where we at? All right, Genesis 2 and 19. Man, this is getting good. Hold on, hold on. Lastly, what's the last, the last word in that, in that? The last three letters. Yes, the ear produces hearing, which is the art form to decide how we navigate through life. All right, come on, let's go to uh, Genesis 2.19. And look how much authority the Lord has given us. Watch this, check this out. Because this is the thing that, I, this is the thing that I, I'm constantly reminded of. It's like too many things in life make us as believers assume the position as victim. And I hate it, man. We ain't no victims, man. We are not victims. Yeah, you've been through some stuff. Yeah, I've been through some stuff. But we're not victims. The world, they victims. Us, we not victims. When Jesus, like, move on the inside, status upgrade. We literally become victors. The problem is we don't feel like it which really isn't a problem because it really doesn't matter how we feel when we learn how to give God's word its proper reverence. We will reverence his word even above what we feel. I don't feel like a victor, but his word says that I am. So I'm going to say what he said instead of saying what I feel like. And far too often, we allow these lips to be hijacked by the God of feeling. I heard Pastor John, I didn't even hear him say it. I think I read it online or something. But you didn't gave somebody a piece of your mind. And now you ain't got no peace in your mind or something like that. Did I mess it up? Because <laughs> we always want to give voice to them emotions. And that ain't, listen, that's by design. Hellfire is partnering. You should tell them. 
Oh, you should say it. You should say it. You ain't nothing. You ain't never been nothing. You just like your old no good daddy. I ain't saying y'all that bad, but I'm just saying stuff that I've heard. I don't know why I keep telling you this. You ain't going to never get it. All right. All right, Genesis 2 and 19. We there? Okay, well, I'll just go for it then. Genesis 2, 19. Now, out of the ground, the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. This is the kind of partnership that God decided to have with us, his creation. I'm going to bring it to you. And whatever you say about it, I'll agree with it. So I asked you simple questions like, what are you calling your life? Because whatever you call it, that's what it is. What are you calling your marriage? What are you calling your children? What are you saying about your ministry? What are you saying about your finances? What are you saying about the situations and circumstances that you find in yourself in right now? Because whatever you call it is what it is. And let me give you even, let's go just a little deeper than that. Why that's important and significant to understand. Not only whatever you call it, but psychologically, whatever you call it also shows us how we'll treat it. Mm. So now it's not just words because we're calling it this because of how it seems to us. And if I'm calling it this, that also means that I'm going to treat it like that. So our behaviors are now being, being controlled by what we say about a thing instead of what God says about a thing. Joshua 1 and 8. We almost there, y'all. Joshua 1 and 8 says, this book of the law should not depart from your mouth. It literally means that it should not depart from your mouth, not that it should not come out of your mouth, but your mouth should never be found without the word of God in there. That's what it's saying. The word of God should always be coming out of our mouths. And we should meditate. Don't just let it be coming out of our mouths, but we should be thinking about it. Day and night, if I miss the part of the daytime, let me know. Day or night, how like, like we should be thinking about it. It says that we may be careful, uh, that we may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then, when we give the word of God this kind of precedent in our life, then no matter what else is going on, no matter what the economy is doing, no matter what the political arena is doing, no matter how your job is downsizing and AI has taken over so many industries and making people like, you know what I'm saying, expendable, no matter what's going on, when we give the word of God this kind of precedent in our life, then we will make our way prosperous because after all, everything that we're connected to on this earth is only a resource. We have been created and called by the source. And as long as the source is partnering with us, nothing shall by any means stop us. If God before us, I'll wait for you to go get the army that you can find to try to stand against us. Listen, for then you will make your way prosperous. You will make your. Not my job. My boss didn't give me the promotion that I qualified for. He passed me over for the third time. He ain't got to make your way prosperous. If you treat the word of God like this, you will make your way prosperous. This is a you job. This is a me job. 
And it don't matter what no one else has to say about it. It don't matter what nobody else feels about it. This is between me and God. I can make my own way prosperous and have good success. See, you know people in your life that got success. But tell, and I'll tell you right now, all success ain't good success. I know people that's successful and they kill themselves first chance they get. With all their money and all their fame. And, every, and everything the devil is whispering to you that you're missing out on. If you just had this, you would be, you would be good. If you just had a mate, if you're single, if you just had somebody, you would be fulfilled. That ain't true. I promise you it ain't true. You can have somebody and still not be fulfilled because people can't fulfill what only the Lord can do. I ain't saying it ain't good to have nobody. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm just saying, as much as I love my wife more than any person that ever lived on this planet, she still ain't enough to satisfy my whole soul. People got wives and husbands and miserable because that ain't enough. People got money. That ain't enough. People have prestige and have influence. And I promise you, on your way to getting it, it seems like as soon as you get there, it's going to be amazing. And you just striving and climbing that ladder only to get to the top of it. And you see the view, you be like, this is it? I thought it was going to be like, this. hold on. I, my whole life I've been working to get to this point for this. I'm going to go hood on you for a minute. All right, I got time to go hood one time. Scarface. My wife, look, I can feel it. I'm going to go blocking it out. <laughs> Scarface. He was a drug guy, drug cartel. I remember Scarface. He came to this country with nothing. And he made up in his mind he's going to be the, big, the biggest drug dealer alive. And he, man, he set out on the goal and he accomplished it. And he got there. And this is one scene where he was in the restaurant. And he was like, he finally had got everything he ever put his life on the line for. And he looked around and he took it all in. He was like, is this it? I did all that for this. <laughs> and it reminded me of what Solomon said. Solomon said, man, I did everything my flesh ever wanted to do. The richest man in the world did everything. He said, I didn't hold nothing back from myself. I did everything I ever wanted to do and more. And let me give you the report on how that worked out. It was all empty. This is a delivering word right now. If you allow that reality to get into your spirit, man, that would already right now at this exact uh, uh, intersection of your life get you to focus on more important things because you're on your way somewhere now that's telling you that when you get there, that's what's going to make you all right. And I'm telling you, it's a lie. You ain't going to be all right when you get there either. If you ain't all right now with the living God, you ain't going to be all right nowhere. <laughs> the Lord told me, listen, the Lord said, boy, until I'm enough, ain't nothing going to ever be enough. I just want to speak this into your spirit real quick. You're not going to remember it. You can always go back on the, on, on, the, on the video and listen to it again. But real quick, I just want to speak 10 practices into your spirit that will sanctify your tongue in order to give God the, the, the ability to use it for his glory. 10 practices that sanctify our tongues. Right, number one, make time for God's word. Just make time. We don't need to go no further than that. You got the time. You just got to make it. Number two, read God's word out loud when possible. Again, we need to hear ourselves saying what God says. Number three, speak God's word and get it in our hearts real good. Keep talking. Speak it. Talk it. Speak it. Start quoting. We need to go back. Some of that old school cliche Christianity we had when we was all about them bumper stickers and wristbands, we need to go back to some of that. That was kind of cool. It seemed to be a little corny then, like, yeah, okay, we got a bumper sticker. These are, but I think we, we kind of got away from that. We need to start back putting the scriptures on the mirror. And when you wake up in the morning, look at the word of God and remind yourself of what the Lord said about you. We need to get back to that corny stuff like remembering scripture. Remember when you used to keep reading and you try to get it now because you wanted to be able to quote scripture? Yeah, we need to get back to that. We learn in all of these songs and all of this other stuff and we know so much trash. Do you know you know trash that you ain't even try to know? The best part of waking up. When did you study that song? You bought that, who bought that album? Who bought the album? <laughs> you ain't even bought a record and you know the song because it got in you without your permission. Folgers didn't ask you, can they put their song in your spirit? <laughs> they just did it. <laughs> and that's how the enemy works. He just doing stuff. He just throwing stuff in there. We ain't asking for all of that. So if we're not actively working against that foolishness and intentionally consuming good things, then where's it going to come from? 
Write the word of God down. People don't write no more. We lazy. These phones, these, these phones, everybody, take your phone out. Let's just throw them and burn them. <laughs> They'll be like, all right, you lost me now, Pastor. You was, you was good all the way up to that point. The devil is a liar. <laughs> Come on back up here, Dad. We about to go ahead and shut it down. I feel myself slipping away. I don't want to slip too far. <laughs> Write the word of God down. Study the word of God. Listen to the word of God. Pray the word of God. Ponder the word of God. Start discussing the word. Remember Christians used to get together and talk about the word? I've been saved long enough to remember that when the saints got together, we used to talk about God's word. I don't know what we're talking about now. We're just talking. We need to get back to discussing the word of God. Memorize the word of God lastly. All right, I'm going to share two more scriptures and we're absolutely done. So y'all get ready for the big drum roll. Let me get Isaiah 51 and 15. Thank you, Lord. Now listen, this is, this is why it is important for us to start watching our mouths. And this is the crazy thing. That there's so much that we're responsible for when it comes to us. If we actually start giving the attention to us that we need to pay attention to, we won't even have attention for nobody. Like, we won't even be in nobody else's business. Like, it won't even matter what Susan and them doing and John and them doing. And it won't even be important how everybody else is missing it and how they way off the mark because I'm using all of my faculty and all of my stuff to focus on myself. Like, I got so much to work on, I kind of need to stay just in that lane. It's an old school gospel song that says, sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, y'all saw that? That made me almost thought I had a tune until I got to all that. Y'all can't see, leave it alone. But you get the point. All right, Isaiah 51 and 15. Now check this out. But I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. And I have put my words in thy mouth and I've covered thee in the shadow of my hand. Why? That I may plant the heavens. Why does the Lord want to put his words in our mouth and cover us and protect us? That once we become mouthpieces for him, he covers us under the shadow of his almightiness. Because he desires to plant the heavens. Earth is corrupt. And what earth needs more than anything is for heaven to come. Jesus said, pray this way. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How does it happen? He puts his words in our mouths. Then he sends us forth and said, speak my word. Speak my word to your situation. Speak my word to your children. Speak my word to your ministry. Speak my word to your neighborhood. Speak my word to your job. Speak my word to your ministry. Speak my word to yourself. And then keep on speaking my word. And I'll plant the heavens. And the fruit of heaven will be the harvest when we take God's word this kind of serious. Woo! And lay the foundations of the earth and say unto Zion, thou are my people. We are the people of God. And as unbelievable as it seems, we're the very ones that he's going to use to answer the foolishness that is in the world. I keep saying this and I'm always we are the Calvary <laughs> stop cutting yourself short 
Stop discrediting the power of God in your life. Stop acting like it was you that brought you this far. And know that the Lord's hand has been on you your whole life. There's no way we get to sit in these seats today unless the Lord himself was with us. And since we know he is the one, he is the only one that could have brought us this far. And he didn't do all that to say, okay, you're here. Cute church. I'm done. No, he's just getting started. He's just getting started. Ah, but Pastor Donzel, I'm up in years. You're starting to sound like Zachariah a little bit. We don't care about them years. The Lord can do more in the years you have left than everything you did before now. He's that kind of God. He can redeem the time. He can give us more fulfillment in our yes than we ever got with a no. Tell him yes. So you can play out to see what the purposes of God really meant in your life. The Lord has amazing things still in front of you. I know you've experienced some good things. You can look back over your life and there's a lot that you can recollect and feel good about. But I'm declaring to you that if you stay focused on the path that the Lord is laying before you now, he's going to exceed every experience that gave you joy before. This is such a precious time that we're alive. We are seeing biblical things unfold that nobody ever thought possible. We are the people of God. Just like the Lord was doing business before we even got to the word. We don't need man's intervention. Sometimes the Lord decides to use us as an extension of himself. But listen, just the presence of God alone can get the work done. If we just submit to his presence, healing comes then. Lord's presence got in Peter's shadow when the shadow hit people and healing came. Miracle signs and wonders is upon us. He's just building us up so we can have the faith it takes to see it through. If there's business left in your heart that you feel stirred to handle with the Lord, come up here and handle your business. And listen, we all are work in progress, and it don't matter. Yeah, some of us are growing real good, and praise God for growth. But there's layers to this thing. We have not yet apprehended. We have not yet made the finality of our maturity. This is a lifelong process, and a humble heart will keep us on the journey, keep us ever, ever evolving into glory to glory and faith to faith. There's some amazing things in you. But we have to partner with God to see them to flourishing.